Burundi, the country in the heart of Africa, is the poorest country in the world. Most of the people live in poverty. The average citizen earns $120 a month. However, this figure is difficult to determine as many other sources provide different figures. But it is obvious that the average salary in Burundi is very low compared to other countries. The lack of money is reflected in many aspects, for example, the life expectancy or the living conditions. The country, which is the same size as its neighbor Rwanda, has been in an economic crisis for years. The high level of corruption and low education rate, as well as the government, are largely responsible for this state of affairs. But how did this happen and why has Burundi been hit so hard? The solution to this question lies in Burundi's past and in understanding the conflict between the Hutu and Tutsi. In 1890, Africa was divided up among the European colonial powers and what would later become Burundi was part of German East Africa. During the First World War, Belgian troops invaded what is now Burundi in 1916. In the Treaty of Versailles, after the First World War in 1919, the German colonial empire was divided among the Allied nations. Belgium was assigned Rwanda-Urundi, although this was only a fraction of the territory already occupied by Belgian forces in East Africa. The colonial powers, both Germany and Belgium, constructed alleged differences based on racial attributions to the groups. The Belgians thought that the Tutsi, who probably moved to Rwanda and Burundi from what is now Ethiopia or Egypt, were closer to them in appearance, character and intelligence than the Hutu and therefore gave the Tutsi minority many privileges and favoured them in aspects such as education or politics. This would later have a major impact on the conflict in Burundi. After almost 40 years under Belgian occupation, Burundi's King Mwami Mwambusta demanded Burundi's independence from Belgium. In the spring of 1961, the country was given an autonomous interim government under the Hutu Joseph Kimpai, which consisted of numerous parties. On September 29, 1961, the first parliamentary elections were held under UN supervision, which were clearly won by the Union for National Progress. Prince Louis Rwagasaw became the new prime minister in Simpai's place. Two weeks later, he was killed by a hitman. Members of the opposing party, the PDC, were declared guilty and publicly executed in January 1963. Michael Mikombero became the first president of the new republic. Within a few years, Mikombero removed all Hutu from leading positions in the military, police, and administration. The army massacred between 100,000 and 250,000 Hutu in the following months. Educated Hutu in particular, such as ministers, civil servants and teachers, were killed so as not to jeopardize the Tutsis' claim to leadership. This event had a significant impact on the genocide of hundreds of thousands of Tutsis in Rwanda in 1994. In 1976, Mikombero was overthrown in a military coup. Pierre Buyoya seized power in 1987. In 1988, the 99.7% Tutsi army carried out systematic arrests and abductions of Hutu. Hutu in hiding were driven out of hiding with tear gas. Villages were burned and those fleeing were shot down from helicopters. Within a week, around 20,000 people died. On April 6, 1994, the plane in which the heads of state of Burundi and Rwanda were traveling was shot down and both died. In April 1994, ethnic riots broke out in the suburbs of Bujumbura, the capital of Burundi. In the neighboring country, the plane crash triggered a genocide and extermination of the Tutsi, killing at least over 500,000 people, mostly Tutsi. In 2005, the Hutu Pierre Nkurunziza became head of state. He ruled the small country in a totalitarian manner for 15 years, and critics were persecuted. After his death in 2020, Pascal Nyabenda became president. The history of Burundi is riddled with violence, persecution, and a disastrous government that was constantly struggling with coups. 
The conflict between Hutu and Tutsi is the basis of the poor economy, as no sovereign government could have been formed as a result of the conflict. The government is responsible for the success of a state, whether the country has a good electricity grid or a good water supply. So the question arises, can the economy in Burundi still grow? The answer is yes, it is. Now that the political situation has stabilized somewhat after the change of government in 2020, the Economist Intelligence Unit, EIU, forecasts an increase to 5.95% for 2024. That would be an economic growth of 2.61% more than in the previous year, which is still too little to noticeably improve the living conditions of the very poor population. It remains to be seen whether the economy in Burundi will improve over the next few years or fail again.